After all of that, Christopher and Nikki went to the races on July 21st and camping in the mountains on July 28th and 29th. Chapter 7. The Last Family Vacation Although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of overcoming. Helen Keller The following couple of paragraphs has some lightly touched on things the FBI does not know. Trust me, there is much more to come in the following chapters. Huh, I don't know about trusting you, lady. When Christopher was at the airport leaving for North Carolina, Nikki sent him a text telling him to take this time to fix the issues with your wife and enjoy time with your family. This gave him a warm feeling of no pressure, and he loved her for it. The first night Christopher arrived in North Carolina, Shanann needed something for a really bad headache. Christopher told her he would get her something. Thinking she was taking an over-the-counter pain reliever, he gave her an 80 milligram of oxycodone. Yo, this guy. He said the pill made her sick and Shanann was up vomiting most of the night, which is true because her brother Frankie speaks of this. Oh my goodness. He didn't help her because he wanted her to lose the baby. Ew. He makes me sick. He felt he had given her a large enough dose to miscarry. He is a piece of shit, y'all. He texts Nikki that he wouldn't be able to call her, just text her. She replied to him with, why? Girl, I'm already seeing this before turning the page. I'm talking about all I see is why. And I'm, what you mean why? Probably because he got a wife. Why not? Are you with her? Hello, her is Shanann Watts. You hear what I'm telling you? He thought she wanted him to spend time with his family. That put the pressure back on him. Obviously, she wanted him to spend time with her no matter what. Christopher was used to trying to please the woman he cared about. The next eight days, he ignored his wife. At night, when she would want sex, he would leave the room. He was not intimate with Shanann during the entire week. He felt he had to do this in order to disappear so he could talk to Nikki for hours on the phone. When he returned from Colorado, he went to Nikki's using his work truck. That day, Nikki gave him a key to her place. She withheld from the FBI that she ever gave him a key to her house. It told him that she was ready to take the next step forward in their relationship. So he told her he was moving forward with the separation. He promised Nikki his relationship with Shanann was going to end even though he had not yet talked with Shanann about a separation. Ugh, what can I say? Shanann, in the hopes they could still fix their marriage or at least work on it, ordered a book and had it mailed to him, hoping he would read it before she came home. When he got it, he didn't even open it. He just threw it in the garbage. He is a, he is a real piece of shit, y'all. I can't. Of the devil. Christopher realized that day that he could not have Nikki and his family at the same time. It was the first time he realized it. Well, look who just got in the swing of things. Like, what is going on? <sighs> What's his IQ level again? It was time to get rid of what was standing in the way of his and Nikki being together. And he could make that happen. Yo. He had his nerve up. But the nerve he had was not to talk to his wife about their problems, but to kill her. <sighs> While in North Carolina, they had made plans to have a little family vacation at Myrtle Beach. The week he'd met Shanann and the girls in North Carolina, Shanann may have thought if they got away together for a few nights, they could talk things out and make things better. She tried to do that. By his accident, by, sorry, by his account, she really wanted to talk. She tried to do that. By his account, she really wanted to talk. But he wouldn't give her any time to talk, to try to come together. Christopher was not willing, nor did he have any desire for things to work out between them. The only reason he was there was for the girls, not Shanann. Even the girls were on his nerves. He had very little patience with them. He was blatant. blatant. Anyone around him would have noticed he was aloof and unfriendly. Very out of character for Christopher. For even his three- and four-year-old girls' spirits noticed the darkness in him. Their pure spirits could see or sense his dark spirit, and they did not have much to do with him. They did not want to hold his hand or walk and play with him on the beach. Normally, they loved playing with their dad, and he loved playing with them. 
Not during these days, however. They basically didn't want anything to do with him, and he really didn't want much to do with them. The first time ever he felt that about his kids. Children can see things sometimes that adults cannot. They are innocent and pure. It's a belief in the paranormal community that infants and small children are much more sensitive to someone that is evil or have or has evil intentions. Bet. It's believed that they have a more open mind as they don't have the mental barriers adults have developed. In order for a spirit to be seen by a human, the human needs to be open and non-judgmental. That describes children. Mm -hmm. The world hasn't touched them yet. Maybe to some point they still belong to that sweet, sinless spirit world from which they come. They probably did not they probably did not sense he was going to harm them, just his spirit being opposite of theirs. Not necessarily something to fear. When he left Nikki's that first day back from North Carolina, he had to hurry to meet Shanann for an ultrasound. What should have been a joyful time for them was met with almost a hatred for her and the baby. As they were doing the ultrasound, he could see a new life moving. He felt indifferent and, and cold towards Shanann and the baby. He did not let the event register in his mind. Here was his son, the son he always wanted. But he felt nothing for him. Shanann reached out to take his hand in support, but he pulled away. He wanted no part of her or this baby. He wanted a different life. Ugh. Makes me sick and sad for her. Christopher went back to work and things carried on as they had before they left. He tried to act as usual around his co-workers. Shanann believed they were better, or at least taking small steps toward better. When he met Shanann later that day for her ultrasound, Shanann was excited. She gave her friend the envelope that revealed the gender of the baby and had invited friends over for the big reveal. Christopher was obviously not happy, so since it would have been awkward in front of all their friends that they were not the usual couple they had always been, she canceled the party. A day or so later, she asked that friend to return the envelope, and she texted Christopher. He texted back that he would like to find out with her the gender of their baby. When he answered yes, she texted back she loved him so much he did not respond. Later, she asked him to hold her or hug her. He refused. Christopher was cold and shut her out. She said they were talking some. So she thought things were a little better since he found out the baby was a boy. However, he was trying to make things work for his advantage. He was thinking about killing her and the girls. At what point does a person allow their fantasies to change to reality? In this case, it changed soon thereafter. Later that evening, as they were getting ready for bed, Shanann brought up how cold he was when, he won when she wanted to hold his hand. He told her his head was just not in the right place and he, and he couldn't deal with her right now. He told her... He would be sleeping on the couch. She said to him, whatever is going on or whoever she is, know that you will never see these kids again, so make sure she is worth it. With that, she slammed the door with him on the other side. He waited until he figured she was asleep and called Nikki. He slept on the couch that night. The next night, he stayed in the basement to call Nikki from there. He had decided his marriage was over, but, not, but had not told his wife. Shanann knew that the fight between her and Christopher... Christopher's parents had really affected him. So she sent pictures of the ultrasound to Ronnie and Cindy, introducing them to their grandson, trying to start rebuilding what had been torn down. They said they did not respond to her. Nikki was excited where things were going and started to tell her friends about Christopher. He decided he needed to delete his Facebook. He knew that her friends might see that Shanann was pregnant. Taking down his Facebook was a further signal to Shanann that something was wrong. That was a definite red flag. It was still important that she save her marriage, so she did what she knew best. She booked a couple's weekend in the mountains. She found someone to watch the girls, and Christopher agreed to go, but already knew he would not be going. He said he went along with it to satisfy her for the moment. He was already planning how to kill her and the girls and was daydreaming about getting rid of his baggage and starting a new life with Nikki. With this new life, he would be able to dump all the things of the old life, the house mortgage, his big bills, his family. This was not logical or normal by any means. Why was he not able to see that none of this was reality and had huge consequences? It is possible that being wrapped in the web of lies because of this affair kept him from looking at things logically. Yet, of course, not every affair ends in murder. Shanann had thought about canceling the trip to Arizona with Thrive, 
She was going to a Thrive convention with some of the girls on her downline. Her heart was just not in it since they had just been apart for so many weeks and things had gone had not gone well yet christopher did agree to go away with her the next weekend just the two of them and she had told her friend they seemed to be heading in the right direction christopher did not want her to cancel he saw an open door to be able to see nikki so he told shanann to go ahead and go on her trip and they would talk when she got home this gave her a flicker of hope that things may be getting better so feeling somewhat relieved she decided to go ahead and go to arizona for her job the weekend was hard for shanann her pregnancy her morning sickness her marital problems were all she could think about and he couldn't even touch her she loved their life and didn't want it to end she didn't want to raise these kids alone shanann was a person who seemed to love life and the people in her life and she wasn't ready to stop fighting for her marriage. But unfair as it was, she didn't know what or who was who she was fighting.